All right, in this lesson, we're going to quickly talk a little bit about the public's perception, perception of what auditor's responsibilities are. And this is an important kind of lesson to understand because a lot of times, for the public's sake, we are put on this high pedestal on what we should be doing in, when, in fact, they don't really know what we're supposed to be doing. Okay? And so one of the things that an auditor must do within their audit is something called due professional care. Now, what is due professional care? Due professional care tells us that an auditor is expected to exercise professional skepticism, which is, includes a questioning mind and a critical assessment of auditor's evidence. And so what due professional care basically tells us is that when we look at financial statements, we need to look at them with a questioning eye. We don't believe that they're always false, but we also don't believe that they are, they are true as well. So we go in it with an open mind saying, okay, it could be false, but it also can be true. And when we go through the audit, if the audit is pointing us to the point where it should be true, then we're going to assess it as that they're putting the information correctly in their financial statements. However, as we go through the audit with a questioning mind, we might see that it's pointing us to this idea that some of the numbers are fake. Now we need to investigate that even more. So we don't just take for granted, hey, they're giving us these financial statements. They should be right because they've got this controller or they've got this VP of uh, finances that have been there for a very long time and they've got this uh, system, a good system put in place. We should always be going into the financial statement audit with professional skepticism, do professional care, and, we qu and a questioning mind at the end of the day. Now, although we do that, the public thinks this, and this is where we get ourselves in trouble all the time. The public thinks that an auditor must detect all errors, frauds, and illegal acts. And I think what um, is a problem for auditors is trying to educate the public to understand that we try to give the reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatements. Okay, so we're not giving them absolute assurance, we're giving them reasonable assurance. And if we're giving them reasonable assurance, we may not collect or detect all errors, frauds, and illegal acts, especially if we're being duped. Okay, so for instance, you know. We may have a management that's very good at hiding things and every time we look for a new piece of evidence, it, the evidence that they bring us or the evidence that we find or every, the evidence that we look at seems legitimate. Here's an example of what I'm talking about and this is kind of an old example that has been talked about um, for many, many years. Um, one time the uh, IRS agents came into an organization and they were looking around to see if the, uh, the inventory that they, the company had on their books was actual inventory that the company actually had on their shop. So as these auditors or these IRS agents go in, uh, they look up at the top shelf and they see these boxes. Well, in these boxes were these expensive or purportedly expensive uh, items that the company had on inventory that matched the inventory report. Well, one of the things that happened when the auditors went through it is they never actually opened it up to check what's inside. Come to find out years later during an investigation, there was nothing in those boxes. They were decoys to what was actually on the inventory sheet. So the, they inflated their inventory balance in order to reduce expenses on their income statement, therefore increase the profits of the organization. Um, but they were showing that there were no, uh, they were showing that the products were there and that they were on the shelf. And when they were, the IRS agents were also going by, they were showing them there. But at the end of the day, there was nothing in those boxes. They were just big boxes to show, to make you think that there's items that were in there. And so um, now that may be an auditor's, uh, uh, that might be an auditor's um, issue there, but that shows you how we as auditors can be duped very easily. Okay. Another example of an auditor is uh, gas stations. You know, if gas stations have thousands of dollars of inventory underneath the ground in the form of gas. Well, there was a, a case study that was done where a gas station actually filled up their tanks with water and when they went in to check it, they checked it with a stick. So every time you go to a gas station and it gets refilled by these tankers that come in, you see this guy takes a stick in there and measures basically how much is left in there and how much he needs to refill in order to uh, top off the, their own tanks. Well, when they dip the stick in, uh, they noticed that, oh, it was, you know, 75% full. 
in reality it was 25% full and they filled it up with water, that additional 50% to make it look like 75%. Now, if you're not a, um, if you're not an expert in that, you might have dipped the stick in there and found, oh, it's at 75%, I'm good. What you really should have done is an analysis of whether or not inside in there is all gasoline or not, because water obviously is not as expensive as gasoline. So again, there are ways that we can be duped. Now, those two examples, although they were easy examples to think about, probably should have been caught by the auditor, but those are somewhat examples of where we cannot detect an error, fraud, or illegal acts because we obviously don't have the same information that the company has. Okay? We talk about the information asymmetry in, chapter, in lesson one. That information asymmetry also provides us that error, fraud, and illegal acts that we won't be able to detect. So the public thinks we should be able to detect everything. Auditors say, no, 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 we, our, our job is not to detect everything. It's to make sure that it's free from material misstatements, which also might, m might be that there are things that are not material that are errors, frauds, and illegal acts. Now, um, the other thing that the public believes is that the public believes that financial statements are uh, the responsibility of the auditors. And although our job is to audit the books, our job is uh, our, we are not responsible for the financial statements. And this was also pointed out in Sarbanes-Oxley of 2002, which basically says that the financial statements are ultimately the responsibility of management and not the auditor. Our job is to audit the financial statement in accordance with PCAOB or AICPA rules. Okay? So what the public thinks is once we've audited them that there are statements. They're not our statements. They're still management statements. And because of Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, CFOs and the CEO must sign off on those financial statements knowing what was in the financial statements. Okay, so again, this is just a small little lesson on what society's expectations of auditors. It's kind of an important one because we often see this information asymmetry that goes on between the auditor and the company in the form of that. And we also have this misunderstanding between the public and what our role is as an auditor and what they should be thinking about when they think about an auditor's work at the end of the day.